everybody what's going on and welcome to rock and roll true stories and today i want to talk about the second mad season record that unfortunately was never made if you guys remember mad season consisted of four main members you had barrett martin of the screaming trees on drums you had mike mccready of pearl jam on guitar john baker saunders on bass and of course allison chains lane staley on vocals they also had mark lanigan of the screaming trees uh, write some lyrics as well as do some additional vocals too but by 1997, two years after the album Above came out, there was plans to reconvene the band and start working on their follow-up record. Now it's important to note, by 1997, Alice in Chains looked like they were pretty much done, and Lane Staley's health was declining even further than it had in 1995 when they did the Above album. Now it's been rumored that the second album was going to be called Disinformation, and according to Barrett Martin in the book Everybody Loves Our Town, we had started making a second record for Mad Season. We had 16 or 17 songs that we were working on, and we were going to do the same thing. Have Lane be the main singer and lyric writer, and have Mark Lanigan be involved too. But I could never get either of them to come down to the studio, and then Mike McCready had the idea of doing a band called Disinformation. I guess Lanigan was going to be the singer, but again he never showed up, not once. So we talked to Mike and Baker, and I thought about getting another singer, and then Baker died. So what happened with all that studio time the band was using in 1997? So Barrett Martin discussed what the band did with their scheduled recording time in 1997 when they learned that Lane Staley would not return for a second record. So according to Martin, the band already booked a lot of studio time, and according to him, we ended up with a lot of studio time that was not being used, so we divided it up amongst the band members. I used my two weeks of studio time to start a new band with Peter Buck of the band R.E.M., Justin Harwood of the band Luna, and Mighty Skekirk up on saxophone, who had just played on the first Mad Season album. Now the band that Barrett Martin would go on to form would be a group called Tua Terra, who would go on to make seven studio records over the next 20 years. But he said that first album we recorded during the cancelled Mad Season session had a real magical quality to it. Now one member of Mad Season who was really eager to get the band back together was bassist John Baker Saunders. So in the book Everybody Loves Our Town, uh, they talk about how eager he was and unfortunately how he was the first member of Mad Season to pass away in 1999 of a drug overdose. So one of his friends was interviewed for the book and he said, I was at Baker's house probably a week and a half before he died, which was in 1999. He lived in a tiny house over by Green Lake, which was another suburb of Seattle, and he was playing in a band called The Walkabouts. He was really sad that they weren't finishing Mad Season's record number two, and I remember he was kind of stressing financially as well. He was just really somber, and when he first came out of rehab and I met him, he was extremely excited because it was a fresh start. I remember leaving his house and last time feeling, this is not the normal baker I'm used to. There's something just not right. So for reference, guys, he got out of rehab with Mike McCready in 1994. And that's, you know, him forming a relationship with Mike McCready kind of started Mad Season. And that's when they brought in Lane as well as Barrett Martin. So another friend shed some more light on Baker saying he had a girlfriend from Belgium who'd gone back to school in Europe and I think he felt really lonely. He ended up turning back dope. I heard this kind of story a few times where if you do what, you, you, what your body would used to be able to do, you can't take it anymore. Now Baker hit the floor and the gentleman that was with him was brave enough not to run and he called 911, but he was dead by the time they got there. He was a sweet man, a sweet man. It was just so crushing and so sad. So the last person that Baker spoke to was Mad Season drummer Barrett Martin, and Martin said he was supposed to meet for lunch the next day. Since I hadn't hung out with him in a little bit, I guess the night his dealer came over and Baker overdosed and died right there on the kitchen floor. This shows the sleaziness of the dealer. The guy didn't even call the ambulance right away. He left Baker in an overdose state, and then later I guess he called the cops and said, you better go check on that guy. And when Baker died, that was it for the band. It was done. And this was a sentiment that was shared by Lane Staley in his final interview he gave in 1999. So Allison Chains were being interviewed on Rockline, and Lane surprised everybody by calling in. And a fan asked Lane whether Mad Season was going to be doing any more club shows or putting out any new material. And this was following uh, Baker's death. And here's what Lane had to say. Hey, hey Joe how's Elliott. Going? How's it oh. going? <laughs> what's hey, up, dude? We're hey, done. I got a question for Lane. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? I was wondering, um, do you have any more Mad Season in the works? And if so, are you guys going to do any like small club dates or anything like that across the United States? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, double no. We're not, we're not uh, doing anything more. 
Uh, actually, uh, the bass player uh, passed on this last year. So. Yeah, right. Yeah. Baker. Baker, yeah. So um, nothing in the works for Mad Season. Yeah. But so in 2012, Mike McCready of Pearl Jam revealed that he was searching for a singer to fill Lane Staley's shoes so he could bring Mad Season back to life. He said, we're looking into re-releasing some Mad Season music that I did with Lane Staley before he died and John Baker Saunders. He went on to say, we're going to re-release Above, hopefully by the end of the year, and put a live concert out. And also we have three, 13 unreleased tracks we never did. So the unreleased tracks are holdovers from a second Mad Season record that never came to fruition. And McCready also revealed that he's been trying to get the rights to re-release Above and hopes to release a live album. He said there's some cool stuff and people will be excited when it happens. We're going to make it really nice for people. In October of 2012, Barrett Martin announced a Mad Season box that would be released on March 12th of 2013, nearly 18 years to the day to the release of the album Above. Now, the release date was later pushed back to April 2nd, 2013, and Barrett Martin said that to honor our departed brothers, Mike McCready and I oversaw a Mad Season box set which comes out March 12th, 2013. It contains the remastered Above album, the Live at the Moore concert on DVD and surround sound, and a bunch of live recordings that we never released. Now the most exciting stuff, three songs that Mark Lanigan wrote lyrics and sang on, songs that we started to record for the second album but never finished because of Baker and Lane's deaths. One of the songs Peter Buck wrote with us and the other two are from me and Mike. They are three of the heaviest and most beautiful songs Mad Season did and I know Lane and Baker would love them. So on January 7, 2013, Blabbermouth reported that Legacy Recordings would release an expanded deluxe edition of Above, a three disc box set comprising of two CDs and one DVD, it also included the original studio album and a host of extras, specifically some unreleased tracks from the band's unfinished second album with lyrics and vocals by Mark Lanigan, and the full audio set of the band's Live at the Moore performance from April 29, 1995, and the first official DVD release of Live at the Moore, including a previously unreleased full concert video of the band's New Year's Eve performance from the now-defunct Seattle club RKCNDY. So the three songs that Mark Lanigan would sing on would include Locomotive, Black Book of Fear, and Slip Away, which were all released as part of the reissue. So that does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you guys picked up the reissue of Above and what your thoughts were on Mad Season. I could say that I was really disappointed that they never reconvened with Lane and did a second record. It would have been interesting to see where their head, were at, where their head was at and what a second Mad Season album would have actually sounded like. So thanks for watching, guys. Hit the like button and be sure to subscribe.